Welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. If you enjoy these videos, please click on the red subscribe button below and the bell for more. Welcome to our online church, a congregation made up of many from around the world. No offering is necessary. Subscribing and watching videos will keep us alive under God's watchful eyes. In Luke chapter 10 verse 27 it reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. As God taught us to love our neighbors as we do ourselves, our online congregation also loves our visitors. So welcome to all who are visiting today. In love there are two things, bodies and words, whether it be man and woman, sister and brother, minister and congregation, or congregation and community. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common prayers to you you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name you will grant their requests fulfill now O Lord the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in the world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting we love you we look at what you have revealed of yourself and our hearts swell our hearts rejoice our hearts are drawn to you we love you because you are kind because you are good because you are merciful we ask that you heal the heart mind body and soul of those members of the online congregation from their ailments, fear, anxiousness, depression, and any problems they may have in coming back to your online church. We ask that you spread your light and attract new people to the channel in hopes that we may grow through you. Thank you that your love does not waver and does not wither. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture today is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, 
and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. Not rejoiceth in, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. May the Lord bless this reading today. Amen. Rick Warren said, God's love is like an ocean. We can see its beginning, but not its end. Love is such a mighty force. It's there for all to hold that kind of absolute love for all of humankind. That is the kind of love that impels us to go into the community and try to change things for ourselves and others, to take risks for what we believe in. Our message today is love overshadows everything. Love is not something natural. Rather, it requires control, attentiveness, fortitude, faith, and the disabling of selfishness. It is not a feeling. It is a practice. Norman Vincent Peale said, God loves us. He wants us to succeed. He wants the best for us. As we just read in verses 1 to 3 of the scripture, we are shown the importance of love. In other words, love overshadows everything. Without love, our words, our gifts, our knowledge, 
and even our faith means nothing. These things are worthless without love. In verses 4 to 7, we are shown the perfection of love. We are shown love in action. There are 15 characteristics of love in these verses. Each characteristic is a verb in the present tense. In our words, love is action. Love is something we do, not something we say. In verses 8 to 13, we are shown the permanence of love. What we want to focus on today is verses 4 to 7. We want to look at these 15 characteristics. We want to see that as we go forward in seeking a vision for this church, that it must contain love. If we go forward in ministry for the sake of ministry, it will mean nothing. Paul was telling the church of Corinth, and he is telling the church today that love must overshadow everything we do in the body of Christ. He is telling us how to have perfect love in verses 4 to 7 by giving us these characteristics. He is also telling us at the end of the chapter that the right kind of love will last forever. Love just makes the world a safer place. I want us to notice something about these verses. All of the characteristics are sandwiched between patience. Suffering long in verse 4. It says be patient. Have patience. Have long patience, bear long, suffer long, be long-suffering, and patiently endure. It reads, we must be of a long spirit, not to lose heart, to continue patiently and bravely in enduring misfortune and trouble. To be patient in bearing the offenses and injuries of others. To be mild and slow in avenging. To be long-suffering, slow to anger, slow to punish, and to endureth all things. It mentions to endure, to take patiently, to tarry behind, to abide, to be patient, to suffer. To remain means to abide, not recede or flee. To preserve under misfortunes and trials to hold fast to one's faith in Christ. To endure, bear bravely and calmly any ill treatment. How many of us need patience? I know I do. If we are going to truly have the love of God in our hearts, we must have patience. Charity suffereth long. This is talking about patience with people. Do we find ourselves at times not having patience with people? If we are to express God's love 
in our lives, then we must have patience. There is no one who is unimportant in the love and purposes of God. Love is kind. Love must be kind. Brotherly love, sisterly love, affection, goodwill, family love, kindness and caring, warmth of our church family. Love feasts. If someone is unkind to us, do we feel like they love us? Most of us know that there is such a thing as tough love. And we also should feel that after being given a dose of tough love and responding in the right direction, that we would feel that the person dishing out the tough love was kind because they had your best interest at heart. To love others means to see them as God intended them. Love, charity, envieth not. When envy is present, love in most cases is not. Envy or jealousy often leads to hatred and anger. To have open love, you can't be envious. Love, charity, vaunteth not itself. Vaunt is mentioned just once. Vaunt is to boast oneself. A self-displayed act of saying, it all happened because of me. Love is not puffed up. In other words, love is not proud. It doesn't go around telling everybody what it has done. It reads in Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. In other words, we should not blow our own trumpet when giving to charity or the needy. St. Augustine of Hippo said, What? does love look like? It has the hands to help others. It has the feet to hasten to the poor and needy. It has eyes to see misery and wants. It has the ears to hear the sighs and sorrows of men. That is what love looks like. Love doth not behave itself unseemly, meaning unbecomingly. Love does not behave in a way other than how it was meant to. Love is not ill-mannered, as some translations put it. Love is polite in its giving. Love seeketh not her own. Love is not self-seeking or self-centered. It does not do things with an ulterior motive. Love is not easily provoked. 
this one is a problem for a lot of people. When we get saved and have God's love in our hearts, it is time for us to stop wearing our feelings on our shoulders. We are an emotional people and all too often allow our emotions to have first place in our dealings with others instead of God's love in our hearts. We get our feelings hurt and walk around with our heads hung or start bad mouthing someone or just complain all the time. A preacher once made this comment that from the womb to the tomb some people are not anything but gloom. Some of us probably feel like we have fallen into that category a lot in recent months. We may have talked with a friend or a prayer partner about a lot of situations in our lives. After reading this verse thoroughly, we can start to see who wears their feelings on their sleeves and who has been walking around in a gloomy state. These people probably look at times like they have been living on a diet of sauerkraut and dill pickles. Not that we don't love those from time to time. But some have not been truly thankful for what God has been doing. They tend to focus on what they perceive to be the bad in their life not knowing that all along God has been preparing them for something more. The past five years were a time of testing, trials, and learning to prepare and reward us for a glorious 2024 in Christ Jesus. Love thinketh no evil. Love does not go around keeping a record of the wrongs done to it. If we have the love of God that God wanted us to have, it won't let us go around keeping a record. Love will not allow you to keep a hidden agenda of revenge or retribution. We must pray and leave all the negative with God to be dealt with on our behalf. Alicia Bruxwort said, The shape of true love is not a diamond. It is a cross. Romans chapter 12 verse 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. It is God who should take care of the wrongs done to us we should follow the example of Christ. He went all the way to the cross, turning the other cheek. We must do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than ourselves. Let each of us look not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
Love rejoiceth not in iniquity. Love will not allow us to rejoice in sin or evil. In recent weeks, we have come to really question the news and what we hear about. People have not had many problems in the last five years. And we tend to hear when we listen to conversation that some people are excited in the fact that these people got what they deserve. But does that give a Christian the right to rejoice at them being thrown to the lions? This brings us to the eleventh characteristic that Paul gives us concerning love. Love rejoices in the truth. Why do you think that love rejoices in the truth? Why should love rejoice in the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Love, when it rejoices in the truth, is in effect rejoicing in Jesus Christ. We must be loving, for it ties everything and everyone together nicely under God. Love beareth all things. This can be exemplified in many marriages and some churches. In strong loving marriages, they can withstand intimacy issues, life goal differences, poor communications, and other issues that might turn other marriages into a big problem. In strong loving churches, we have seen some churches with financial problems, congregational problems, and many other issues, but they have still managed to survive. That is true Christian love. When marriages and churches can get through these problems, it is an example of the love of God in the body of Christ to be able to accept one who has offended the whole body to forgive and make things right love believeth all things what is this telling you why does love believe all things love always trusts there must be a certain level of trust when you love someone. If you break that trust, you can kill a relationship. Studies have shown that if trust is broken in a marriage, it can take up to seven years to rebuild it. Love always hopes. Love gives one hope. Our love for Christ gives us the hope of eternal life. Our love for our spouse gives us hope for our lives being happy. And lastly again, here is patience. Love endureth all things. At the beginning of this passage, love is patient with people and the offenses they may cause. At the end of the passage, love is patient during the circumstances that affect our lives. Love endures. Love stands tall at the end of a terrible day. 
some of the effects of charity are stated that we may know whether we have this grace and what if we have not we may not rest till we have it this love is a clear proof of regeneration and is a touchstone of our professed faith in Christ in this beautiful description of the nature and effects of love it is meant to show the Corinthians that their conduct had in many aspects been a contrast to it charity is an utter enemy to selfishness it does not desire or seek its own praise or honor or profit or pleasure not that charity destroys all regard regard to ourselves or that the charitable man should neglect himself and all his interests charity never seeks its own to the hurt of others or to neglect others it ever prefers the welfare of others to its private advantage how good natured and amiable is Christian charity how excellent would Christianity appear to the world if those who profess it were more under the divine principle and paid due regard to the command on which the Apostle Paul laid its chief stress let us ask whether this divine love dwells in our hearts has this principle guided us into becoming behavior to all men are we willing to lay aside selfish objects and aims here is a call to watchfulness diligence and prayer now remember what I said at the beginning of this message what we need to see is that as we go forward in seeking a vision for our church that it must contain love if we go forward in ministry for the sake of ministry it will mean nothing love must overshadow everything we do in the body of Christ let us pray Heavenly Father as we go forward in seeking a vision for our church please allow our congregation to do everything with love in mind we know that love must overshadow everything we do in the body of Christ we ask that as we leave here today you give us strength to try to build our church family and to complete our mission for you we also ask that you heal those that are not present and bring them back to our congregation once more let all charity that is done here be filled with your love in mind in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen in this journey of love we are assigned to serve our savior by being faithful for him we live our lives being inspired to create a faithful temple for the Holy Spirit to twist in his direction for his living needs may our Savior Jesus Christ grant to each of us the direction to love happiness and strength to continue in every good work 
these thoughts are all for our online church with my deepest respect and my prayers that they may strengthen our love our happiness our faith and uplift our hearts Adonai Nisi the Lord is our banner God's blessings be upon us all and have a lovely week